Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I've actually got um, ice water. I already had my Red Bull for the day. I try to limit myself to one sugar-free Red Bull per day, so uh, water is healthy and it's good to drink, so cheers, mates. As you know, I've got a GMAX printer and I, I printed this. This is a bridging test file, and it's, it's well, it's quite a distance across, and I was, I was just wondering, how does my printer do it bridging? I mean, I've never really tried anything crazy for bridging. I know it's able to bridge segments and it does a decent job at it, but I've never really tested it out. And I, I, I was asked recently in an email because uh, I'm gonna be collaborating with someone on something. They said, can your printer bridge well? Yes, it can. It's phenomenal. Look at this. This is, so from here to here, it's 200 millimeters across, but here across the top, it's well, like 180. And uh, it's a little stringy, just a, just a little stringy right here. Not bad though, not bad at all. And uh, the top filled in, uh, it's just, it really, really worked well. And you're probably going to want to see the settings I used, and you're probably going to want to see it actually printing the, the bridge itself. So let's get to it. In order to find a bridge testing model, I went to Thingiverse and I found this one by Vomistein, published July of 2013. And if we look, here it is. It looks neat. I added it to my collection and then I downloaded it. Then I brought it into Simplify 3D and here it is. And the GMAX build plate is pretty large. It stretches across the X axes. If we double click it, it shows it at 65 millimeters across. This is a test. I need to make it a little bit bigger. Let's uncheck uniform scaling, double click, triple click here, 100, enter. And that makes it 100 millimeters across from this point to this point. But this is a test and this is the GMAX and I'm like, what the heck? So double that. And now we've got 200 millimeters across. That's half the width of the build plate. It's crazy. Now with it this size, of course, you're probably gonna wanna know the settings. And this is what it's going to look like when it prints. And it's going to tell, it tells me it's just going to take 19 minutes, which isn't much. Well, let's go through the settings. So on the GMAX, I've got infill at 9%. I don't know why it's 9. I think I had it at 10 originally, but whatever. Nozzle diameter and the extrusion width are set to 0.5 with the multiplier at 1.0. Retraction distance of 2 millimeters at 50 millimeters a second. And I have a half a millimeter vertical lift as it's moving about. It's 0.2 layers, 125% is the first layer height. Four top, three bottom, two shells. There was a skirt. There's my infill. No support, as you can tell. Temperature is 209 degrees centigrade on the PLA I was using. Here's the important part, or one of, I guess. I have zero fan layers one and two. I have 60% fan speed at layer three, and once it hits layer seven, it's 85% lay or 85% fan speed. And the reason that I can go this high and maintain that temperature is because it's an E3D hot end and it has that E3D silicone sock on it, insulating the hot end from the cold, cold breeze. Uh, let's see, where was the, there's something in here. Oh, and I'm printing at 60 millimeters per second. Bridging, um, here are my bridging numbers. In fact, there's there's nothing special here. It's purely Simplify 3D defaults. Interesting, right? All right, well, I didn't film it as a time lapse. I actually, I was like, I should film this. So I filmed it on my iPhone, so let's go to the video. So here's the printer going. It's finishing up kind of the top layer of that tower there right before the bridge. And then, and then it just goes crazy. And look at that, there it goes right across and then it's going to come right back no droop maybe a little bit of droop but it, you know it firms up once it once it cools a bit and it just goes back and it does it again that is well i guess across there it's like 180 millimeters maybe i don't know it seems to be going pretty darn well and it's impressive because uh it's it's quite uh, quite a bridge i was looking on youtube and i didn't see any bridging that was uh, that was that extreme. I saw people saying extreme bridge, and they were showing 50 millimeters or 100 millimeters. Um, I, I just wanted to double it, I guess, and I wanted to 
I wanted to double it. Uh, and this is what I came up with. So I've got a 200 millimeter bridge. All right, well, that's, <laughs> that's really it. Just a quick little video, but amazing nonetheless. A nearly 200 millimeter bridge. Well, I, I, I think that that's decent. I didn't see anything else on YouTube in my five second search that said uh, that this was a common thing. Um, I looked for 3D printing bridge and there was a couple that said extreme bridging at 50 millimeters or 100 millimeters, uh, 200 or 200 ish, I guess, 180, 170, whatever it is. I think, I think it's large enough to consider it extreme. And uh, this didn't come up in any results. I did see some 3D printed bridges in Europe, you know, the one I'm talking about, right? Uh, but other than that, I think this is it. So can your printer do this? I'm curious to know. Let me know in the comments if your printer can do this. Give it a thumbs up if this is fun. Uh, leave a comment if I left anything out. Uh, otherwise, happy printing and a, a big thanks for everybody who's watching. Hey, you know what? Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.